This video is sponsored by Fotros. Fotros, because weather planning was yesterday. And that's so sad. Most photographers get to their photo spots at a time when it's already over. But that's sad because Blue Hour can paint such amazing colors into the sky. You just need to know how to predict Blue Hour actually. And I've got an LED email from Fotros to get Blue Hour tomorrow. So I would say, first of all, let's go out and let's take some photographs. friends very good morning hello day we have fantastic chances for getting blue hour maybe even with all this phenomena there's even a 50 50 chance of getting pink stripe so fingers crossed therefore and yeah i will tell you later a bit more about how to predict blue hour and it's more than uh, just uh, yeah uh, having clear sky by the way and i would say first of all let's hike up there let's have a look if we can find a fantastic composition And I'm here in a national park, Gesäuse, here in Austria. And you know, whenever I'm hiking in the early morning, it's always so dark. And I ask them if they could be nice and turn on the light for us here. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I didn't do that. Yeah, I went already in setup. All I'd say, I, I went in pre-setup actually, because I don't really have a composition. I mean, I have a rough composition. The thing is, yeah, when I, I look out there, I can't see anything. <laughs> I just see silhouettes of the mountains back there because it's so early in the morning b before sunrise. And um, yeah, I just think roughly working with this mountain range back there, um, maybe, and this is the, the, the idea actually, to get a pink stripe up there, where we have a 50-50 chance there for. In blue oil, we get subtle light from uh, that side where the, where the sun uh, goes up. This is the other side. So may, uh, a little bit more there. So we will get a little bit of light, maybe um, subtle light on the mountain, no direct light or something like that. It's just rest light or so. And one thing maybe, we have the train station down there. Mm, yeah, the first um, thought was that it could maybe be distracting, but on the other hand, I think it could maybe even, yeah, work with the composition when I look around here. So now what I did is, uh, before I was a little bit more back there, it didn't really work here with the train station. Yeah, I, I don't get it really into the right place and I can't move all too much with the composition. I, I, I don't have all the possibilities here I would like to have. Also here it's quite complicated because we have lots of bushes here. And when you look back there, the mountain at the left hand side starts already to get nicely subtly illuminated uh, from that direction there's a yellow uh, being uh, an orange stripe in that direction um, we can't see it because yeah we are behind the mountains but this illuminates now our mountain back there and i hope afterwards i mean they can't start here right now but that doesn't mean all too much hopefully later we will get also a pink stripe we will see so i would say i will take the first exposure here now and i zoomed in a little bit more i don't drag the station in um, i think it, it works quite nice from here so let's try for that.
<laughs> it's quite crazy. We have minus 18 degrees here now today and I'm struggling massively with the battery of my video camera. I think it's the third or the fourth battery even <laughs> which I use here. And yeah, just quickly, when you look back there here now, it starts now with the a pink stripe, just subtle. I'm not sure if you can see that here on this camera. I see it here with my eyes uh, and with the with the raw file of the of the camera. We anyway can bring this out a little bit better than. And I would say before it goes away, let's make the click. It's fantastic. Now we get also a little bit of elk glow up here on the mountain. The thing is, I mentioned it already before, I was not 100% sure about if we would get pink stripe today. Um, it was a fringe situation, I would definitely also upgrade the algorithm or optimize the algorithm for photos so that also you are able to predict uh, phenomenon like uh, a pink stripe. I will tell you later the, how you can predict it also without photos, of course. So uh, what I did is, because I wasn't sure that we would get it, um, short before I I got the, the pink stripe photo. I changed lenses. I, I got my, my long lens over on, on, on my second tripod here, which I have uh, primarily for my video actually. So I was not able really to, to film it. I had, I had big problems with my second uh, camera, my vlogging camera here. I, I'm not sure how much footage was possible. But however, um, I will show you the photograph right now and then I will go over uh, uh, back to my office and I will tell you a little bit more about how to predict blue hour and yeah, pink stripe. I'm more than happy with all the photos I got. I think I got each of them to a level and I could offer them as finer prints on my website actually. And by the way, I got even one more image which I'm just blown away. I will show it to you a little bit later. And the crazy thing is, it was so easy to take all these photos. Simple composition, simple camera settings, no filters. The only thing you need is to know how to predict blue art. Yeah, and for those who use photos, as I do, also that is super simple, of course. You just get an LED email with Blue Hour. <laughs> and just quickly up from now, there's a new feature in photos. For Blue Hour, it makes a difference between sunward and shadeward. And sunward simply means that there are Blue Hour phenomena towards the sun, orange stripe, for instance. And shadeward instead means yeah, that there are phenomena into the other direction. Pink stripe, for instance. Orange stripe, sun. Pink stripe, other direction. How simple is that? <laughs> and there are more weather phenomena in blue hour, not just orange and pink stripe. That's the base, actually. It defines the direction and the color of the light we get in blue hour. Orange stripe affects with the direction of the sun, and pink stripe affects against the sun. 
Now, the most important requirement for getting blue eyes is a clear view towards the sun, for getting the orange stripe before sunrise or after sunset. So you can't predict that by using weather apps, obviously, because that is a piece of information you simply don't see inside an app. You just see if there is clear sky at your point, your location, but you don't see if the horizon is free of clouds. But that's an essential requirement for predicting blue hour. So if you don't use photos, you have to use weather maps. That's the only way it works. I will link you my favorite weather maps down in the description. They are completely free of charge, by the way. And this is how to predict blue hour. We need to get the sky free of clouds toward the sun, right? So when I'm going to photograph before sunrise, for instance, I just open the maps for cloud coverage. And I simply check if there's a big gap towards sunrise, towards east, obviously. To be safe, you need a gap of at least yeah, 600 kilometers or more towards the sun. Now, the problem is that just a tiny mistake in the map just a little bank of clouds that wasn't predicted would destroy your prediction. If here come clouds, for instance, although they were not predicted, you will not get blue hour. So what I also do is, just to be safe, I also check the air pressure. When the air pressure around these 600 kilometers is significantly higher than the air pressure of the area around, I know that I can trust the prediction. And I do the same with winds, by the way. When there are no strong winds, blowing my air bubble away, yeah, I know that I can trust the prediction. However, by that, we just get blue hour itself predicted, a big gap towards the sun. By that, we know that we will get an orange stripe, which yeah, could look nice in an image, or we could use that just yeah, as a light source to get our subject illuminated, as I have done this morning. And our light is so subtle and nice, isn't it? I think I should really do more of blue hour photography. Yeah, the light is really so awesome. Okay, but if we want to get a pink stripe, we need more than just 600 kilometers towards the sun. We need another 600 kilometers to the other direction as well, towards the west for sunrise. Yeah, for sunset, all the things are vice versa, of course. However, if you want to photograph the pink stripe, you need a gap of 1,200 kilometers minimum in total. That's quite a big distance, isn't it? I think it's something like yeah, from France to Ukraine, or from Iceland to Norway, or from Minnesota to New York, or something like that. That's really a distance. Now, I mentioned that I saw a 50-50 chance for getting pink stripe this morning. I wasn't 100% sure about that, because we had a fringe situation. The thing is, we had a 600 kilometers gap this morning towards east, towards sunrise, to get the orange stripe, but we didn't have a 600 kilometers gap towards west for getting the, the, the pink stripe. We just had 500 kilometers towards the west. The last 100 kilometers or so, we had a little bit of diffuse clouds. They didn't block the light completely, they just, just softened it. Uh, but it anyway worked. The pink stripe got a bit soft, so it was completely usable. So just quickly for the photos users, I optimized the algorithm for photos already so that you get pink stripe predicted also in a fringe situation like that. And for weather maps users, if the last 100 kilometers are a tiny bit cloudy, it's probably not a problem. Okay, but as we already mentioned, Blue Hour offers more than just orange stripe and pink stripe. Short before sunrise, we get a nice Alpen glow, for instance. I showed you already an Alpen glow image from this morning, but I got one more one, which I'm really, really happy about. Let me show you. Leave me a comment which of my today's photos you like most. And yeah, also tell me, of course, if you have any questions about weather prediction or weather planning or whatever. The most important thing is really to use weather maps, yeah, unless you're using photos, of course. And I made already a comprehensive video about how to make your own weather prediction by using weather maps. I will link it 
here for you. My friends, I hope this video was useful. If yes, give me a thumb up. Don't forget to join me next week. There will come a fantastic video as well. I thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.